Jai Hind dear students I am Dr Preeti Mittal and today we are going to continue with the chapter chemical reactions and equations in the previous video we have seen combination and decomposition reactions along with performing some experiments so today we will continue with the chapter starting with displacement reactions when a more reactive element displaces a less reactive element from its salt solution then the reaction is known as a displacement reaction for example if we put iron nails in copper sulfate solution then we find that the copper sulfate solution is blue in color okay but when we add iron nails to it then we see that the blue color of the solution fades away and copper gets deposited over the iron nails why it happens because iron is more reactive than copper and so iron displaces copper from its salt solution so what will be formed in this reaction is ferrous sulfate and copper so this reaction when one element is displacing another element from its salt solution when a higher reactive element is displacing a low reactive element from its salt solution is known as displacement reaction this reaction is also known as single displacement reaction now to remember displacement reactions we need to remember the reactivity series so i'm just writing the reactivity series and this reactive series is very very important so let me write that so it's so the reactivity series is first is potassium it's a most reactive element then comes sodium then calcium then magnesium then aluminium then zinc then comes iron lead pb stands for lead then it's hydrogen then it's copper then comes mercury then it's silver then comes gold au stands for gold and ag stands for silver then comes platinum pt stands for platinum but how to remember all that you all have to remember this reactivity series because in the reactions in the exams you could be given any of the reaction and you could be asked that whether this reaction is possible or not for example if you are given that uh, copper is added to lead sulfate solution and copper sulfate plus lead are formed you could be asked in the exam that this reaction is possible or not to work it out you need to remember the reactivity series but learning this reactivity series is going to be very simple i'll just be telling you one mnemonic for that and uh, based on a mnemonic you can easily remember this reactivity series so you can remember it by k stands for potassium but i'll be saying it karan ne kar mangi alto zen ferrari papa bole hangama kyun hogi aage aur pitai so it's very easy to remember karan ne car mangi alto zen ferrari papa bole hangama kyun hogi aage aur pitai so by that very easily you can remember the reactivity series and if you remember the reactivity series then it will be very easy to work out such questions because now you can make out that lead is more reactive than copper it comes before copper in the reactivity series so it cannot displace copper from its uh, so copper cannot displace lead from its salt solution so this reaction is not possible this reaction is wrong it's not possible okay the reverse of the reaction could be possible that lead will be displacing copper from 
lead copper sulfate so the reverse of the reaction would be possible but this way the reaction is not possible because how can copper displace lead copper is less reactive okay so the other giri sirf more reactive elements ki chalegi okay that will displace the less reactive element but agar aapko apki jagah se koi hata de so would you be angry with that person similarly you will become hot with anger gusse se garam ho jaoge same thing happens in the reactions of displacement reactions also that is displacement reactions are always exothermic reaction remember that it's very important in your exams to work out which type of reaction uh, uh, any reaction is so remember any displacement reaction is also exothermic in nature all displacement reactions are exothermic reactions also means in every displacement reaction heat will be produced वैसे भी गुस्सा तो आएगा because you are being displaced from your position so गुस्से से गर्म हो जाएंगे and the solution will be hot remember that okay some more examples of such displacement reactions are uh, for example lead when placed in another cop uh, if the reverse of the reaction is also po possible that lead combines with copper sulfate to form lead sulfate and copper that is also possible apart from that if you take some other salt of copper like copper chloride then also a similar reaction will be taking place lead chloride will be formed and copper will be displaced okay similarly the same reaction is going to happen with iron also or with zinc also if you combine zinc with copper sulfate then also zinc sulfate and copper will be formed okay apart from that if you place aluminium in any salt solution of iron for example in ferrous sulfate if you place aluminium then also you will see a similar reaction that ferrous sulfate will be converted to zinc sulfate or aluminium sulfate and Uh, iron will be displaced so any more reactive element will be displacing a lesser reactive element let's see the same with the help of an experiment so let's see to it we'll be performing the displacement reaction so i have iron nail with me and i'll be putting it in copper sulfate solution you can see that this solution is blue in color it's copper sulfate now i am placing iron nail in it we'll be observing single displacement reaction with that iron is more reactive than copper so it will displace copper from copper sulfate solution and iron sulfate ferrous sulfate will be formed this is a slow process so it will be taking some time so we'll be just leaving it here and we'll be observing after one hour now one hour has passed it's actually more than an hour that has passed so you can see the color of the solution that has changed earlier it was bluish color now you can see the green color because of formation of ferrous sulfate iron being more reactive than copper it has displaced copper from copper sulfate solution and now the solution is ferrous sulfate that is why it has turned green copper sulfate solution is blue in color now i'm taking out the nail you will be able to see that it's very slight change that uh, a thin layer of copper has been deposited over it i don't know whether it's clearly visible to you know i am creeping it on the slab so that hopefully it would be visible copper is brown in color and rust color is also brown so it looks as if it's rusted but it's actually a layer of copper that has got deposited over the iron nail so that is an example of displacement reaction okay now let's discuss double displacement reactions so we have seen about the single displacement reaction now we'll look at double displacement reaction double displacement reactions are those reactions in which there is exchange of ions between the reactants to form new products 
this double displacement reaction is very important for your exams because you could be asked to explain double displacement reactions with example or you could be asked to differentiate between displacement and double displacement reaction. So now let's see to an example showing double displacement reaction. When sodium sulfate reacts with barium chloride, we take aqueous solution of both of these. Aqueous solution means sodium sulfate is dissolved in water. So sodium sulfate is powder that is dissolved in water that is called an aqueous solution. So we take aqueous solution of sodium sulfate and add barium chloride to it and then we see what happens that NaCl that is dissolved in water so it's aqueous that is formed apart from that barium sulfate is formed. This barium sulfate is solid and that will occur as white precipitate. So when sodium sulfate reacts with barium chloride, sodium chloride and barium sulfate are formed and this barium sulfate is going to form in, in the form of white precipitate. So we can see here that there is exchange of ions between sodium sulfate and barium chloride and that's what we define double displacement reaction. Double displacement reactions are those reactions in which there is exchange of ions between the reactants to form new products. So which, which are the ions that I can exchange here? Barium was associated with chlorine and sodium was associated with the polyatomic ion that is sulfate. So now uh, after the reaction, barium is forming a bond with sulfate, BSO4 and sodium is reacting with this chlorine. So whenever there is exchange of ions between the reactants, to form new products that is known as a double displacement reaction okay i'll also we'll also perform an experiment to show this white precipitation of barium sulfate but before that one more example of double displacement reaction is when lead nitrate lead nitrate combines with potassium iodide both these are taken in aqueous state means lead nitrate is dissolved in water and it's made to react with potassium iodide that is also aqueous solution. Now when they react with each other then lead iodide is formed and potassium nitrate is formed. Potassium nitrate and lead iodide are formed. Lead iodide occurs as yellow precipitate. You can see a beautiful yellow precipitate formed of lead iodide because lead iodide is formed in the solid state. Wherever precipitate are formed, that is in the solid state. KNO3 that is potassium nitrate that will be occurring as aqueous solution. Okay, that will be getting dissolved in water. Now, if you have any confusion about writing the molecular formula, Please refer to my video in which I have explained how to write the molecular formula. So uh, the link of that you will I'll be sharing that in the description box. You can check it out if you make mistake in writing the molecular formula. So here also we can see that lead nitrate is combining with potassium iodide and forming lead iodide and potassium nitrate. This reaction is not balanced. So let's balance it. Here I have two iodine atoms. Here just one is there so I have to make it two. Now to make it two I need to have two potassium atoms this side also. So on right hand side also we will multiply it with two. But now we find that potassium nitrate. So the nitrate part is twice here and here also it is two. So that is balanced. Lead if we compare that both the sides we are having one atom of lead. So it is already balanced. So this is a balanced chemical equation. One thing that you need to remember is that in case of double displacement reactions, the reverse of the reaction is not possible. If you are asked to write the example of double displacement reaction, you can never write sodium chloride combines with barium sulfate to form barium chloride and sodium sulfate. That is totally wrong. 
because they are not going to react with each other. If you just combine sodium chloride with barium sulfate, they are not going to combine with each other because sodium chloride is a having a very strong bit bond between it. Sodium and chlorine have a great affinity towards each other because sodium is highly positive, chloride is highly negative. So, uh, they are having a very good bond between them and so they are not going to react with barium sulfate. So, remember that reverse of this reaction is not possible. Now, let's look to an experiment for proving both these reactions, showing both these reactions. But apart from that, just I'll shift to side. You can take a screenshot because the second reaction is given as a question in the NCRT book. But the equation is not given in your book. So you can just take a screenshot. I'll shift to side. And now let's look to an experiment for the same. Today we'll be showing double displacement reaction using aqueous solution of sodium sulfate and here I have taken barium chloride aqueous solution again. So now I am going to add this barium chloride to sodium sulfate and we will observe a double displacement reaction with precipitation formation. There will be formation of aqueous NaCl along with that there will be white precipitate of barium sulfate that will be formed. So you can see the white precipitate of barium sulfate that's formed in this test tube. This is an example of a double displacement reaction. In this test tube, I have taken lead nitrate aqueous solution and here I have aqueous solution of potassium iodide. Now I'm going to add potassium iodide to lead nitrate and we'll see a double displacement reaction. So let's see what happens. So you can see a beautiful yellow precipitate of lead iodide being formed here and along with that aqueous potassium nitrate is formed. So this yellow precipitate is of lead iodide. This is an example of a double displacement reaction. I hope you enjoyed the experiment and you were able to see the beautiful white precipitate of barium sulfate and the yellow precipitate of lead iodide formed in the double displacement reactions. So that's all for this video. In the next video, we are going to discuss about oxidation and reduction. If you like the explanation, please subscribe to my channel if you haven't already and please share it with your friends and help me spread knowledge. Good day everyone.